Okay. Uh, Chief, I'll go ahead and let you start, but you can take the floor. Well, I, I wanted to thank all of the, the participants that, that came down uh, to help us and, and to view uh, Officer Green's body during, during this time of, of uh, grief for us. Uh, there were just an enormous amount of support uh, throughout the country. Uh, we had individuals that, that came from as far as uh, Chicago. I spoke with a, a couple of Chicago PD uh, officers. Uh, we've received cards and letters uh, from across the country. Uh, just a, a numerous amounts of, of donations have, have been made so far. Uh, every day we're getting cards and letters with, uh, with cash and, and checks and, and money orders. And, and I just want people of Mobile to know that uh, we really appreciate the support of our citizens. When we left uh, Sunlight District Auditorium yesterday, uh, the streets in Pritchard were lined with, with individuals offering support for us. From Clark Street to, to Highway 45 down the interstate, uh, down Government Street, uh, the citizens of Pritchard, the citizens of Mobile, uh, individuals in Tillman's Corner and Theodore uh, all lined the streets in support of the Mobile Police Department and Officer Green's family. And we are so appreciative uh, of everyone in Mobile. Uh, words cannot describe the feeling that, that I had as I was driving down the, the roadways uh, seeing all of the support. So I just want the citizens of Mobile and, and Pritchard and, and other areas uh, with, within our jurisdiction to know that the Mobile Police Department really appreciates the citizens of Mobile. That's a, was it, that amount of support, was it surprising at all to you? It, it was a spectacular sight. Uh, never in my life have I seen such support. Um, you know, I'm sure that, that the family uh, appreciates it and it was overwhelming support, um, you know, with, with just e children, uh, young folks, elders, uh, with individuals holding signs, holding flags, uh, our firefighters, uh, city employees, and, and businesses along the route stopped conducting business to come out to the streets to show their, their respect uh, and support for, for Officer Green and his family and for, for the Mobile Police Department. Uh, people traveled here from across the country that didn't know the officer. And th that just shows how much of, of, of continuity there is within the law enforcement family. And we really appreciate it. And I guess now at, at the department, I mean, you guys kind of have to switch gears now and understand there's an investigation that has to take place now. Well, you know, the, one of the things is that, you know, in, in this chain that we have, we, we lost the link, uh, and so we have to go back and rebuild uh, that link, and, and that's going to take some time. You know, we, we offer grief counseling uh, to, to our officers who, who are involved and, and those who were not, who, who may have difficulty uh, with the death of Officer Green. Uh, we want to make sure that we support our officers, that we support our civilian employees uh, and everyone associated uh, with Officer Green. Um, We've had a lot of contact with the family. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, I just left the family. We, we took more food there. Uh, but again, thank all of the citizens that donated. You know, we had individuals who donated up to, a single individual who donated up to $10,000. Uh, that's an enormous amount of money. That, 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 uh, that shows a lot of character uh, of, of individuals who are willing to to support uh, us in, in that manner. So we really appreciate that. And I know it's only been what, less than a week now. Uh, yes. In terms of this investigation, what, what do we know about Friday's event? Well, let, let me say this. It's been a very, very difficult six or seven days. Um, and, you know, every day our officers still go out. They still have to answer calls. Uh, they still have to do their job. Uh, and, you know, they have done that uh, without question. You know, there, uh, there, there have been a lot of tears shed, a lot of prayers have, have been offered. So at, at this point, we are doing a dual investigation. We're doing a criminal investigation and an in administrative investigation. Uh, I can tell you um, that there was some talk about the medallion that Lawrence Wallace uh, had on his neck and, and whether or not 
that was the instrument that caused the death of Officer Green or whether it was involved in some way. Uh, it is, uh, at this point uh, in the investigation, it is our belief that that necklace had nothing to do with the death of Officer Green. Uh, we have uh, found an item, an article that is consistent with the wounds of the officer. It is an edged blade of, of some type. Uh, we still have a little work to do on that, but we believe that that, that edged blade uh, is what was used to stab, stab the officer. Um, you know, there, there has been some talk about the officer, uh, about the suspect uh, not being handcuffed. And what we understand in the investigation is that, you know, of course, Mr. Wallace was arrested for robbery and, and arson. He was walked out of our back door at headquarters, put in a police car, and was transported by Officer Green to Metro Jail. Somewhere between here and Metro Jail, uh, Mr. Wallace got out of his handcuffs. Now, he was certainly handcuffed in the rear uh, the way he should have been. We believe that he used a handcuff key. We're not sure where it came from, where he had it concealed on his body, but we found a handcuff key uh, uh, in the, underneath the sole of his shoe uh, once, once, uh, once he was taken into custody. Uh, so we believe he, he took his handcuffs off. Um, I have had an opportunity to look at some video from Metro Jail. It appears that when they arrived at Metro, the officer pulled into the Sally Port, um, removed Wallace from the rear of the car, uh, and at that point, Wallace pretended as if he was handcuffed. He kept his hands uh, locked behind his back, um, and as the officer and the suspect walked toward the Sally Port door or the, the booking door uh, is when the officer noticed that he was not handcuffed. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Wallace raised his left hand. Uh, when the officer noticed that his left hand was, was not secure, he reached for his left hand and Wallace stabbed the, the officer in the, in the right, uh, in, in, in the left side, I'm sorry, in, in the left side. Um, there was a fight, there was a struggle, and it appears that the officer was stabbed a second time. Uh, and at that point, Green retrieved, uh, I'm sorry, um, Wallace retrieved the officer's uh, keys, uh, entered his police car, started it, and rammed his way uh, out of the Sally Port door. Uh, he left that location, he left Metro Jail, um, and ended up, the, the next contact we'd had with him was south on Dolphin Island Parkway, uh, where we tracked him to Daytona Drive. Uh, and at that point, uh, there were a number of officers who were there. Wallace fired several shots, multiple shots at the officers. The officers returned fire. Um, Wallace had concealed himself underneath a house there on Daytona Drive, uh, and there was a standoff at that point. Uh, that lasted a around an hour or so. Uh, there were more shots fired. Uh, ultimately, uh, Wallace was, was struck and, and killed, um, and you know, that's really where we are uh, at the in, during the investigation now. I can tell you that the officer had several weapons in his car. Uh, those are the weapons that, that Wallace fired uh, at the officers. Now you, you said that he had some sort of blade or something, his instrument we think was, was used. It, did you say that you, you think he may have had that concealed on him, uh, we're talking about Wallace? I, I believe uh, the investigation um, indicates that he retrieved a blade or, or some kind of, of edged weapon from somewhere. It may have been concealed on his body. The investigation may or may not determine where it was be, because obviously uh, we can't question Wallace as to where it was. Uh, the officer can't tell us anything. But, but certainly uh, we have located an edged weapon. Uh, we have located a handcuff, a handcuff key. Uh, but I can tell you that um, there were officers and or detectives who searched Wallace prior to him um, being placed in the police car. Hey, you talked about the medallion a little bit. And everyone is so hung up on this 
medallion thing. Is it possible that that weapon was concealed within the medallion? Because that's no, what's, no. It, it, it is not possible uh, that the weapon was concealed within that medallion. Uh, the, the weapon that we believe uh, was used uh, is, is it's so large, it, it, it's larger than the medallion. So there's no way that it was concealed uh, inside, uh, behind uh, that medallion, inside or behind the medallion. So, you know, all of those, those, those speculations that the medallion was used, why didn't they take the medallion? The medallion had nothing to do with the, with, with the death of that officer. I mean, you, you're saying that he was searched before. Are there any concerns in terms of protocol when it comes to searching these suspects? Well, there, there's always concern. Uh, what we do not do here is generally we don't strip search people. Now, there are, are areas of, of, of the body where people hide things uh, underneath their clothing, uh, you know, and, and not going into, you know, the, the extent of the search. Uh, I, I can tell you that there somewhere on his body or concealed within some, some clothing uh, was some type of weapon and, and a handcuff key. Are there any, uh, is there any chance that anyone could be faced reprimands because of this incident? I, I don't see that happening at, at this point, but, but what, I, what, what I will say is that we'll wait until the internal investigation is completed and, and we'll see what it, what information it offers to us, and then we'll, we'll go back and evaluate that. I know this is something you clearly guys want to be thorough with. Uh, any indication of a timeline is in terms of this investigation? No, this is one of those investigations that we certainly want to take our time with and be as thorough as possible uh, to make sure that, that uh, we do it right and that we look at all aspects, aspects and facets of, of from, as to what happened from, from start to finish. And Chief, what have you told your, your officers? I, I, I can imagine that some of them might be a little bit on edge in terms of transporting suspects now. W what have you told them in terms of uh, instructions? Well, th this is one of those things where um, we are going to be more cautious in everything that we do. And so they, they have been cautioned uh, about searching and transporting and, and the prop proper procedure uh, and training. So, you know, for, for the most part, um, you know, this is one of those things uh, that could never happen again. Um, so we certainly want our officers to be cautious uh, in, in, their, in their contact with people on the streets, in their transporting of, of suspects, transporting of witnesses. Uh, this is truly a tragic and unfortunate uh, incident. Um, and we certainly don't want it to happen again. Are there any uh, possible changes in protocol that could come because of this? Well, uh, again, the administrative investigation, uh, if, it, if it determines that, that there needs to be a change in, in policy or procedure, uh, we'll go back and look at that. So this is something you're kind of waiting on? That's correct. Um, and you said that this is something that, that can't happen again. I, can you be certain in saying that? I mean, it, it, it seems like almost like a freak accident. Well, let, let me say it this way. We certainly don't want anything like this to happen again. Um, we, so we, we have to go back and make sure uh, that, we, that we look at procedure and, 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 and other things that the internal investigation uh, might see where something needs to be changed. So, we, you know, we certainly have to go back and look at some things. Um, and then personally, I, as a police chief, I can't imagine what it must have been like for you. It, is there any part of this that you, you hold personally, or do you take any of this personally, of what, what happened? Well, all of the men and women uh, in this, this department uh, are my responsibility. You know, and I'll leave it at that. So if these were your children, your sons and your daughters, and there was a death, then you can imagine how I feel.